Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh and I'm really pleased to, to be talking about this because this is Sophie's third novel. Her first, The Water Cure, is one of which I'm a huge evangelist for. It is still a book that I recommend widely, um, particularly those who are looking for new writing, um, essentially also very strong female perspective on the portrayal and expectations of being a woman in society. The Water Cure is fantastic. So um, this book is Sophie's third, and this was nominated, long-listed for the Women's Prize this year for 2023. And there's certainly a lot that is familiar that we've got, come to know from Sophie's writing. So here in this book, Sophie examines an extremely strong, obsessive, I want to say love, but it is almost like a possessive obsession that one woman has for another. The woman that, of the centre of the book is called Elodie. She is a baker's wife in a 1950s French town. She has a very humdrum existence and she is, becomes obsessed with the arrival of a new woman in town, Violet. Violet is the wife of a random ambassador who's just appeared in this French town. And Violet is glamorous, odd, a little bit bohemian, and quickly um, Elodie realises that Violet is in a, some kind of very intense s and based relationship with her ambassador husband. And Elodie, who has a passionate spirit that isn't being fulfilled by her husband, latches on obsessively to Violet's life and fantasises and obsesses over how she too could live this extremely sexualized existence that she feels would reawaken something very deep within her. This random French town though that Elodie lives in is not that random. Elodie lives in Pont Saint-Esprit and if, I think I've got that right, Pont Saint-Esprit. Um, if you don't happen to know Pont Saint-Esprit, it was the um, in 1951, it is a, a town in France, in 1951 it's suffered or its residents suffered a random bizarre mass poisoning. There was a large mass poisoning event where the whole town was poisoned. The source of that poison is still never confirmed, never proved and some conspiracy theories have come about as to why that poisoning happened to this French town. And the subject is cursed bread because one of the theories is that the poison got into the bread of the main baker in the village, Elodie's husband in this particular aspect, and it poisoned all the villagers. Now what happened, irrespective of what, which conspiracy theory you believe, is the, ta the townsfolk of Pont Saint-Esprit went mad. There were killings, there were suicides, there was bizarre behavior. Um, animals died, just really, people jumping out of windows, suicide rates were up, um, people were attacking each other, all because they had been poisoned, sent frankly mad. So, Sophie has used this backdrop of an actual real life insanity in an extremely contained environment, this small rural French town, to examine Elodie's obsession with Violet. So it's a vehicle for her for Sophie to look at obsession, to look at the line between obsession and hysteria, to look at the, um, the passion of emotions and how the poisoning may have released intense emotions in the townsfolk as much as the arrival of Violet had released intense emotions within Elodie. Got it? Great, because this book is largely about Elodie's obsession. The fact that there is this famous mass poisoning event going on in the background, Sophie rather cleverly leaves to the background. She's not really interested in the conspiracy theories, though of course she uh, gives a few hints on where she wants from the perspective of her plot for you to believe. But this is really about Elodie. This is really about a woman who is unfulfilled and who sees in someone else a very dark desire and a very dark, passionate, intense, highly sexualized experience that she wants for herself and how her obsession with Violet releases the emotion within. So I've explained it. It's only a short book, so probably it shouldn't take long to read. But what's challenging about this book is even though I love Sophie and I love Sophie's writing and there are great passages in here, it is hard 
to get under the skin of LED and violet in any kind of sympathetic way. So these are all, it's a town of anti-heroes. It's a town that you don't have, you don't have much sympathy for LED. She seems extremely weird. She doesn't come across as a sympathetic character. Um, and also there is something dreamlike about Sophie's writing. So I don't know whether she's done that deliberately because of the hysteria that's going to sort of, that is developing in the background. But Violet seems a dream at times. And Elodie, Elodie's behavior is not normal. It's not understandable. There are passages which don't feel believable, such as when Violet and Elodie speak. They're not, it's not a friendship or a kinship or a relationship that you believe would have worked. There's something that's very hard to get into as a reader. And I kind of know why Sophie's doing this because it's all meant to be deliberate. But as a reader, there's hard, there's not much to grab onto. So even though this book is short, you may find it takes a while to read because it is intense. It is a little surreal. It is like, like I say, you're in a dream or like you're watching them through smoke. It's, it's hard to see what's going on. And yeah, it, it's just quite strange. And behavior is quite strange, um, which is probably why Sophie's very cleverly left it as a very short book. However, I do understand why this book was long listed for the Women's Prize this year. Sophie is a really interesting writer. She is a great new voice. And the fact that she's prepared to take on a rather unlikable um, uh, set of emotions, some which may be hard for people to follow and understand or have sympathy for, and place it front and center, I really commend. The challenge is for me is that it was hard to stick with, even though this book is only about 200 pages. Um, but nevertheless, it's really great to have Sophie back, and I always enjoy reading her books. Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh.